What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norrenrad89, here with my buddy, Steve. And we took a little hiatus, but now we are back to talk Courage the Cowardly Dog. If you do want to go check out our past videos, I have a playlist in my YouTube channel, so you can go there and check out all the videos that we've done so far. So now we are currently on part 10, and we are doing season 3, episode 4, 5, and 6. How are you feeling, Steve? Good. Ready to get back into it. I mean, the hiatus, I think, was partially my fault, mostly my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. All. We, I'm, we were I'm, both I'm very that. busy <laughs> uh, i'm gonna own that but I'm, i was excited it was nice to sort of you know even after taking a break from it to sort of hop back in and watch it and it was sort of like you know yeah when you when you step away from something for a little bit it's something it, it, it almost feels like you're watching it again with like fresh eyes yeah that like return to it and it's like you said you're taking that little break because sometimes binging stuff yeah it could get a little daunting you know it can get taxing if you just keep watching the same kind of content or the same show over and over <laughs> sure sure yeah 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 although i wasn't that i'm not that i was getting bored with it i was just... <laughs> oh yeah definitely. I just like we, we love our courage <laughs> so this is how we dive into was episode four part mm -hmm. one correct let me pull up our, our title, Hard Drive Courage. Courage's computer develops a virus and traps Muriel inside. Courage must go into a digital world to bring her back. So this one I thought was really cool because as I was watching it, it reminded me of two things. Very David Lynch style stuff. It's very avant-garde and weird. And then also Code Lyoko, which is a TV show that used to be on, I think, Nickelodeon back in the day. Oh, where these yeah. kids would go into computers and they would fight viruses. And when they went in the computer, the animation would change kind of like this episode. So what did you feel about this one? Yeah, I totally forgot about that show, Code Lyoko. That, you know, it's like that. Yeah, that <laughs> unlocked a memory. Um, you mentioned that. I haven't thought about that show in years. Um, but no, I really like this episode. I like when the computer gets more involved in a way. Um like we've had one where like the computer like just turned flat out evil. This one obviously yeah. have a virus in the computer. I like the change in style. This early two thousands three D computer animated graphic that they had going on was really cool. Um, you know, I think knowing that it's from that era makes it definitely not feel dated. But it also didn't like yeah. didn't look bad. I mean, this was good for the time too. Um, definitely. But, yeah, no, and I I thought it was fun, and of course you know you get parallel stories of like real life virus, para, you know with Eustace, and then you get this computer virus, and it was just a fun little you know parallel story that they told, and I enjoyed it a lot. Oh yeah, and then of course Muriel's like always like her secret recipes or anything, you know, coming in clutch, all these recipes, all these things that Muriel creates, and I forgot this one it was the syrup something syrup soup <laughs> it was vinegar gelatin and then yeah it was the first yeah. thing that she tried and then there was uh artichoke soup yeah artichoke syrup soup yeah <laughs> i think it was the, well i mean her secret recipe was the vinegar gelatin <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the artichoke soup they were trying to get from the computer and that's what sort of set off the virus right Oh, yeah. And then they had, um, what was some other methods they were using? The leech joke was funny when they had leeches mm -hmm. on Eustace. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, the virus from the computer was like, as long as it's not leeches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what did you think of our virus character, too? His uh, kind of nasally voice and the way he was designed? Well, I sort of like the, the sort of snake-like, like, weird. It was very, yeah, it was like elongated kind of, I, I don't know, but I forget what viruses actually look like. Are they sort of... <laughs> spirally like that i don't know i don't i'm trying to I think, think of yeah like, like under a microscope out. when you look at them yeah they kind of look like that they gave him yeah like you said a snake look but also like coated look like coating it looked like his body was made out of coated numbers or letters yeah, and stuff yeah <laughs> uh sort of i mean probably thinking too deep into it but i mean think of even like dna coding everything's everything has a code to it right um yeah. But uh, yeah, I you know I was you, I, I couldn't remember what you know what viruses look like under the microscope. But yeah, no, I love the design. I thought the character was funny. You know, they always kind of go with these exaggerated um, accents or voices with the villains, um, and we see that kind of in this whole uh, batch of episodes. You know, all the villains yeah. have a very <laughs> distinct voice, or not even if not villain, tangential characters have very distinct accents and yeah we have a couple of interesting side characters coming up in some of the other episodes mm -hmm. and stuff oh one thing i wanted to mention did you catch our uh our like adult adult porn joke that was in the beginning of this movie or the beginning of this episode that was hilarious oh, when muriel 
Muriel went to go look at the computer when Courage asked her to help him or something like that. And then mm. she went to go touch a button. And when she touched the button, like something came up on screen and like Courage went like that and blocked the screen. And she was like, oh, oh no. my. <laughs> That's very funny. No, I did not catch that. Um, yeah, I, was, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any little trivia bits for this one. Um, the hard drive's virus's line is, why, why didn't you just say so? Which has become a popular internet meme. So I guess this 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 episode was sort of memefied. Uh, wow. for a little That's while, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they did have a, a literal viral moment. I don't remember this meme going around, but I guess it was <laughs> <laughs> in the early days of social media. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and this is one of the first, uh, one of the few episodes of the series to have a female writer. There weren't too many in the early 2000s, I guess, for Cartoon Network. Yeah. Oh, that's that. Well, that, I mean, that's cool for this episode, but sad that there wasn't that many back then. I'm glad. That was the case. Yeah. 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 But, which is unfortunately <laughs> very common. Um, I mean, obviously, much better now, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Animation we have many was managing, amazing. I guess, for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Now we have a lot of amazing female voices that are out there writing some cool stuff. So, absolutely. Um, we had a um, Pac Man reference. Um, with the uh, the flying iron mouth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so a few a couple of little things. Nothing too crazy. There were a few cameos later on. Not nothing here, but um in this back to episodes we had a couple of cameos coming. Oh yeah. Did you want to get on to our next one segment or yeah, yeah episode B or episode four, segment B? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if Part I could two, talk episode four. Uh we had Ride of the Valkyrie, uh, which is not the first time this uh, that that piece of music was referenced in this show um while courage and his owners are on holiday in norway three valkyries mistake muriel as their sister and carry her off into the sky where they will fight against the trolls um and courage sets out to win muriel back so this we get a cameo with the duck god that was great yeah and the truck <laughs> yeah so says we get the duck god up in the clouds and you know he's got the truck and um but yeah so this one has them like on vacation they're like looking after these like birds i forgot what they were called norwegian blues or something yeah uh, that bird <laughs> you know whatever I, I did i did laugh though when the bird went out for lunch and fed itself Oh, that was great! Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, sh 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 and then the like, lunchbox, and then just puts crumbs out and just starts pecking the floor." <laughs> yeah, she's like, "It's feeding." <laughs> it's feeding. <laughs> so I, thought, yeah, I thought that was very funny. Um, what did you think of this one? I love the the Viking ladies were great. I thought, they were <laughs> and how they had was it the first letter of their initials on each on their belts and stuff like that, and they're yes. just what different color hairstyles, but just for them to think that Muriel is one of them, and like she like her accepting, she's so accepting and so nice, like she never is willing to fight with anyone or dismiss them. She just accepts it and goes along with them. She doesn't question anything. She's like, oh, oh. well, she. I think she thinks it's like a like a, a recreation or like a reenactment. That's something. true. Yeah, reenactment. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's so sweet. I love how she's so kind of like, you know, just can't not, you know, not rude. She's very oblivious to certain things, but it makes her so genuine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, and of course, you know, this is just like, you know, busy doing his own thing down there he's not involved you know he doesn't he can he could care less <laughs> oh yeah he gets he gets actually smacked up a couple times in this episode by the norwegian mm. blue he gets yeah he gets messed up a few times in this one we get a couple gags with eustace on the side <laughs> oh yeah yeah early on and then you know he's, he's preoccupied with the birds being laid on like you know the eggs being laid on his head um that he's yeah he's not involved with the the valkyries but <laughs> no i thought it was apparently there's a cameo with the powerpuff girls which i completely missed apparently they're in this oh wow i didn't know that either yeah that there one i is. missed i oh, missed I that now so with okay so i look i'm looking at the screenshot here there is a a poster of the powerpuff girls while the valkyries are sleeping there's a poster. oh nice in there in there yeah okay <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah on like the like yeah, the stone pillars, or whatever, that are in their room. <laughs> no, but I thought this was cute, you know, that they sort of sang their all their dialogue, which was super fun. Uh, yeah, it made it kind of like a musical episode. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They sang every dialogue piece, for at least the Valkyries did. Uh, 
and I like the um the trolls or the goblins or whatever they were fighting. You know that was cool. Yeah, when they ended up when you end up finding out that our long lost sister of theirs is mm-hmm. actually with one of the trolls or fell in love with one of the trolls and she kind of mm-hmm. I guess ran off with it. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, they're forbidden love. Uh, I don't know if this is referencing any sort of like. It almost feels like it's referencing an opera, but maybe just because they're singing the whole time. <laughs> I don't know if there's an actual like Valkyrie themed opera. You know, whether that'd be amazing. Yeah, well, I heard them falling in love with trolls. That'd be so fabulous. <laughs> I would. I would go see that opera. Absolutely. Um, but apparently, um, oh. I was looking at it wrong. I thought there was a, <laughs> a a crouching tiger hidden dragon reference, but they're actually that's actually a reference to another episode. These okay. trivia, the, the trivia I always have up for these is, is they always reference other episodes, so it caught my eye. I was like, oh wait, no, wait, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, know, yeah. But overall, this was a fun one. Um, you know, yeah, we haven't quite gotten into super. There really wasn't a lot of horror in these three episodes. I'll say um, they were still fun, not a lot of scary. Oh yeah, this one was, these were more, even the villains, like there were a couple actual villains, but a lot of the stuff was more just adventures or like you would say stories with Muriel and Eustace and Courage. Like this one is just them kind of on vacation and then just coming across these Valkyries. There's not really villains in this episode or anything like that. (laughs) No, no. I mean, I guess the trolls are the closest thing, but I mean, even again, that's all perspective, right? Because they're just another side of a war. We don't really know what their shtick is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, they just you know, we assume we... they're villains because they're trolls, or we, we, maybe we <laughs> think they are, but, you know. Uh, no, but this was a cool one. Yeah, this was a nice one. And then to wrap up with our wedding, right? They did get married at the end, right? It was a little wrap-up of a wedding at the end. They... <laughs> yes. Yes, they were married. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, and okay. then the Norwegian Blues were cooking Eustace. I think that's oh, yeah, that was the very... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Because he wanted to celebrate with a feast. And so Eustace was being served. Nope. (laughs) Always, always, man. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's like the running running gag of Eustace always dies at the end of the episode. I mean, they don't show him dying, but they're alluding to his demise. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He gets, yeah, he he goes through the ringer a lot of times, but he he deserves it kind of. I think this is almost payback for a lot of the treatment that he kind of like said in the first two seasons there was more of Eustace being kind of an antagonistic villainous character and now he's kind of more of a gag more of a like a stick you ever joke <laughs> oh yeah 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 100 <laughs> percent um although we are, they, they do play some well we'll see this in a couple episodes uh they do play with his cruelty a little bit um which is oh, yeah. very interesting so, so now we get on to episode five mm-hmm. all right so this one starts out with Let's see. Scuba, scuba, do. While on a tropical island, Courage and Muriel discover an underwater city made of coral. There they befriend the citizens. Meanwhile, Eustace informs his mother that there is a small creature living in the coral. She decides that the coral there can make uh, fine wigs and sets off to destroy the coral city and evict the creatures of their coral to make her wig factory. <laughs> so a very uh, elaborate description, a very crazy story. This one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, definitely. Yeah. That goes into the, you know, these wiki descriptions. Sometimes the, the synopsis is like a sentence and then sometimes they're just going to give you the whole plot. Um, it's very <laughs> funny, but yeah, no, this was a funny one. Um, you know, I always love when Ma is the villain. Uh, or reoccurring villain. It's all hair. Yeah. Related. You know, she's you know she's very <laughs> stuck on her hair. Uh, we also, obviously we know where that's where Eustace gets it from. And uh, <laughs> and I love the uh, the coralites. I thought they were adorable. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so cool. They have the king, and then like their whole like kingdom and everything. That was so cute. <laughs> and seeing uh, yeah. Muriel in her little scuba outfit down under the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just yeah, I mean, obviously, again, this is a very re- recurring theme for this show is, uh, you know, this environmental kind of message. You know, they do that. It's very common. I mean, this was sort of like you know the fourth, fifth episode now, where there's some sort of like protect the ocean, protect the this, protect the that kind of message, and I, which I all here for. Um, but yeah, and I thought the Coralites were so cute, and they were kind of sort of taking them through their uh, history. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, this is that was so cool. coral. You know, it was adorable. 
<laughs> oh yeah, and like to think that like eventually, you know, Courage is gonna be he, he was gonna be on that wall with Jebediah because he ends up helping them and everything and stopping, you know, Eustace's mother, which they get into a quite an epic battle in this one right underwater. <laughs> this is quite an epic battle. <laughs> yeah, where they were when they're like like uh what do you uh shots being fired right i can't remember what are they uh, oh yeah the missiles know. and like subs there was a sub yeah. and missiles and everything it was wild because this one i was like i didn't think we were going to get such an action-packed third act between the two of them I, where does she get all these resources from i want to know where does ma get like <laughs> all this equipment all this money to fund uh, yeah. it'd be great I, if they called into an episode where she like won the lottery and maybe that's another reason why Eustace is kind of semi jealous of her because she's rich mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that makes sense. I uh yeah no this it, this is a fun one. I um I just think any like other little bits that I really it, I mean appreciate besides like, the title, little... yeah. Scooby well, Scooby Doo. Yeah, yes. Scooby Scooby Doo, which you know no no real Scooby Doo reference within the episode, but the title was great. Yeah. Um oh I like a little coral light. Um, the little one, the, the little, the, the, the little, oh, yeah, who eats the pie. Yeah. He's like, eats the pie. She eats the pie. <laughs> she's like, ha, 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 sorry. <laughs> and she burps all loud, like deep. She's like, Burr. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just really cute. Um, this is sadly the last, um, appearance of Ma though. Um, this oh. is in the trivia because the actor does pass away. Um, oh, dang. Yeah, yeah. Not to bring not to bring the episode down, but that was our little but, bit of trivia. So, so she does, yeah. So she passed away um, September of '01. Not not related to the other thing that happens in September of 2001. No, no. Um, but this is a couple days before. But uh, yeah. So unfortunately, yeah. I, I was saying I, I, she's one of my favorite reoccurring, but that's sad to know that this was the last one. I'm happy. I'm happy. I didn't know that going into the episode because then i was just thinking about that the whole time you've been thinking of it too much now it's more it's going to be more of a uh, kind of emotional nostalgia hit when you rewatch it every time we talk about the episode yeah. or something like that you know <laughs> i mean hey wait what a what a last episode to have you know this whole like underwater battles it was you know character yeah, it was went out bang yeah, it was very almost like Thunderballish, like kind of. And I thought it was cute how like the wig falls off, and then she just ditches the scuba gear. She just like dives right down, like she's gonna go straight for the wig, but she can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the wig. The fact that they want to make coral, you know, coral wigs. I'm like, that's got to be so heavy on your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's insane to me. Um, no must, no fuss, but then you're also, I don't know, I guess you're gonna have one strong neck if you could hold that up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Your neck muscles are gonna be like, <laughs> oh man, yeah, no, this is fun. Uh, yeah, the way that they choreograph action in this show is really fun, um, really clever. I feel like they put a lot into it. Um, probably helps that they only have like 13 episodes a season or something like that. Yeah, um, that they really put a lot into each one. Oh, yeah, because this seems like a show, like I said, they think about it. It's very theme heavy and, mm -hmm. like I said, reoccurring stuff that pops up. And we can tell, like, environmental stuff is very important to them, talking about how we treat the environment and also kind of those character relationships that we see growing. Oh, absolutely. All right. So should we go to part two? Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> All right. So episode five, part two, uh, Conway the Contaminationist. A strange el elderly man named Conway moves in with courage and his owners. He changes their lives when he assists them to live in a life of filth, causing a potential biohazard. <laughs> so oh, yeah. this is a funny one. So Conway crash lands. You know, this whole thing, you know, he crashes on his like old plane. Uh, apparently he's like 190 something years old. And he claims that, you know, the success that his long life is to live in filth. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> like, that's what he claims. <laughs> I mean, if he's if, if, if maybe there's something to it, I don't know. But I, you know, I saw I saw this as sort of like a knock on like a lot of um health schemes, a lot of like health, you know, health fads that go around, yeah. and so they're just sort of like taking it and really running the other way with it. Like, yeah. you know, what's really good <laughs> for you is just live like crap your entire oh, yeah. life. <laughs> you know, just try this sludge and you know, release the vacuum. I don't know. He's doing all he's the fumes. All this stuff. 
I know that that house ended up looking nasty. Like how you eventually get to like the biohazard sequence. Like, yeah, that's crazy. And they have to condemn Kurt, Muriel and Eustace and Courage's house. They have to condemn the house because it gets so bad because of Conway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, no, overall this is uh, this is a fun one. I liked his design. This sort of like this decrepit uh, green. He kind of, yeah. I don't remember the name of the character, but he sort of looked like um, the, the, like the undead director. Remember the director? Uh, yes, yes, like from that season one, yeah. <laughs> the so, yeah, Tarantino yeah. one, yep. <laughs> sort of looked like him a little bit, just green. And you know? I thought it was crazy because his eyes, they blink the other way. Instead of going like this, they blink this way and stuff like that, like all like creepy like. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> um, what would you think overall of the episode? I thought this one had almost just like that creepy, like, like you said, viral or disgusting feel to it almost. It was fun, but it had that almost not body horror, but like creepy nature to it. Cause like you said, the way the house yeah. eventually gets the way Muriel and Eustace look, they become very like shriveled down and weak and stuff like that because they're sucking in bad air and they're not eating or drinking. Right. So I thought this one had a lot of creepy vibes. So it wasn't a scary film, but a lot of gross stuff going on. <laughs> no, I think I gagged a couple of times. I think when he was like drinking the sludge off of like Eustace's feet, <laughs> nasty. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. it was yeah, no, it was a little rough in, in parts to watch, but in a go, I mean, so yeah, if the horror of these this batch of episodes, and this is, I'll take it. <laughs> this is the <laughs> we get to it. Um, but no, but the design was great. Like you said, we get to this point where like the house is completely just condemned. It's a biohazard. They put it in a bubble. Um, Courage is then able to sort of create a dog door from the inside to get out. Yeah, because. Um, cool. you know, uh, what was Conway says you're gonna need a bigger vacuum, and then he goes and he creates this thing, and you know, yeah, we end up finding himself. out that Courage is a fantastic engineer, right? In this episode, yeah. we find apparently <laughs> he can build stuff, and like he's very good at you know sawing, putting stuff together because he builds a kind of out of like broken plane pieces or something, builds like Conway's a whole plane, vacuum right? system. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He uses that as the as the vacuum to just get it all out. Yeah, no, this was fun. Um, yeah, they're always sort of knocking on stuff, like I said. So like a lot of these like health schemes that honestly people are still falling for, which is really funny. I like read one that like was getting popular on TikTok. It was like um, it was targeting like teen teenage boys. So I'm like, it's crazy. Like now now they don't even care who they target. It's just like it used to just yeah. be like. You know, I mean, think back to the 50s. It was like housewives with like the shaky belt thing that they would just kind of wear <laughs> around, or you know, or uh, even the shock ab things. Like I remember in the 90s, they had the shock abs. Remember the things they're like, you can get amazing football rock star abs if you just sit down on the couch and wear these shock things on your belly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Electric electrocute your your gut. Um, <laughs> I wish I could remember what this thing was on TikTok, but I was like listening to it and it like went viral or whatever. Crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, so they, you know, he captures Conway into this big bubble, you know, this like filth bubble, and he's happy, and now everyone's breathing okay in their house and all this. Oh, yeah, and he sends Conway off because, yeah, he's very happy with living in that balloon, and he just sends him away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Which just makes me wonder. Like, I guess maybe it did work for Conway, which is Conway maybe not human. I don't know. <laughs> I know that's like yeah I don't know what's the thing of that character besides like I said a creepy design like and this said being so old like in the just the way he looked he had the scarf right he had his little scarf and he was like mm -hmm. oh his coffin <laughs> <laughs> something something wasn't right with him but I guess it worked because he did perk up after he drank the sludge so I'm like he may yeah maybe he maybe he died maybe that is a zombie like the director you know <laughs> <laughs> maybe to him it doesn't matter. Yeah, are you giving me almost like a Godzilla, that one villain, a uh, Adora vibes? He's like a toxic sludge monster. He feeds off of like fumes oh, yeah. and toxic stuff. <laughs> well, you know what? If it works for you, it works for you. But uh, don't bring that into my house. I'm, uh, you know, I'm already disorganized. I don't need to deal with the extra filth. <laughs> oh yeah, none of that. <laughs> so shall we get onto episode six now, part one? Sure. All right, so let's bring that up real quick. That'll be Cats Under the Sea. So we have a returning villain, Cats. Displeased by Eustace, Muriel takes courage with her, and they go on a submarine vacation. They realize too late that it's being run by one of their old enemies, Cats. So I think this is one of the first ones where they actually remember who Cats was, right? Or, that, or Courage remembers who he is, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
the cards didn't always remember him, right? It was just no, yeah, they've ran him to him a few times, and there's like no inclination no that they knew each other. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like Cat almost has like the um the men in black pen or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or he has like he's just so familiar looking that like those people you run into, you're like, I've seen you before, or you've seen that doppelganger of that person before. <laughs> right, right. But I, I like this one. Well, every Cats episode, funny enough, is it's always animated in the same way. It always has sort of like this dingy, almost like Saw episode, like Saw movie coloring to it. Yep. Yeah, the uh, background's um, everything. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I dig, you know, even if I don't love every like Cats plan or motivation or story, whatever, I just the design is always interesting. Um but yeah, and I love that it, it, it sort of starts with like Muriel sort of just being tired of being disrespected by Eustace. I know it was his demanding that what that crazy breakfast of crispy bacon, not too crispy, and then more more meat, steak, and this and that. <laughs> and then he asks for the ba- the crispin to be extra crispy again. I don't know. He doesn't know what he wants. He just wants to demand things. <laughs> Which we all oh know yeah. That. I mean, we all you know <laughs> we all know that person. But yeah. um yeah, no, she then she hears cats on the radio like, Are you tired of being disrespected or, or being um un- underappreciated, underpaid, or you know? Uh and so he just gets all these people to agree to work on this submarine. Oh uh, yeah, a nuclear powered submarine, which I heard that I was like, Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not great. Um uh, but yeah, she gets hired to be his like tea maker. Yeah, right. that was cool. Yeah, the oolong tea, all the different teas that they had there. Yeah, because Muriel's good at everything. You know, she could bake, she could make tea, mm-hmm. she could do basically anything in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, and then she stumbles on tea and tea, which I appreciate. <laughs> um, yeah, and then did, what were the different jobs? And then there was like the the entertainment person, the entertainment coordinator, the the puppeteer, the um, Ventriloquist. ventriloquist type guy yeah he had the puppet in the in the case who was claustrophobic that was kind of funny he was all claustrophobic and then he puts him in the case <laughs> um but that ends up being courage is in right because we get the return of no dogs uh allowed uh and then courage decides all right i'm gonna take over for this ventriloquist dummy right yep. on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which you know, courage as a ventriloquist dummy was adorable. I kind of want that as like a plushie or like a, some sort of figure. It was just sort of, so the cool. way they made him look was really nice. it was cute. I know, I love it. I love when courage is able to. What is it? Kind of um, do like a little like Mission Impossible spy thing. You know, kind of slip in the cracks and like get into a place. <laughs> I mean, he's also kind of like a shapeshifter, which we never really address on the show. <laughs> <laughs> He's got amazing <laughs> skills. He's got great skills. He's the ambassador of disguise, courage. You know, um, and I wonder if he gets. You know, what courage. He gets it from you know him and Scooby Doo. They get. He gets it from Scooby Doo. You know, they always be shape shifting into their monsters or acting like the ghosts or something. Oh, man, I, I, I can't wait to get to that movie. I've been. I'm so excited. I mean, once we once we finish season four of this show, I'm like, I'm, I'm so excited for that movie. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know you watched a bunch of Scooby stuff. You never watched it yet, right? Or did you? No, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. I've seen a bunch of Scooby Doo movies, but I haven't watched that particular one yet. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but then we find out. So, Cat, this isn't really Cat's submarine cruise ship. This is he wants to take this down so that way his actual cruise line can thrive. He wants to blow this one up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he kind of um, infiltrated the other cruise ship, kind of like how Cur- or kind of how Courage infiltrated the pup- as a puppet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of like yeah, double crossing, secret plans going on. I you know I appreciate that. It's it's really cool. Um, but yeah, so like, yeah, so we find out that this plan is to blow this up, and so of course Courage now needs to. Oh, and the plan is with the T. So that's how Muriel's involved. Is now her T the TNT. Uh, is, is of course explosive. So, uh, <laughs> so that's supposed to get served at whatever time, you know, I think 1600 hours. You know, he wants it served or something. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. So, this is a really fun one. I sort of love the back and forth. Oh, um, yeah. Here. Yeah, this is probably, I want to say, 
might be my second favorite cats episode in terms of like yeah the content and how funny it was and stuff and just like i said by this time the dynamic we love seeing this returning character and you know all the time his stories get kind of interesting or different or his you know what he's trying to plan but in this one like i said staying close to that design of that grimy kind of saw look even the colors very similar to the first episode we ever saw him too so i thought a lot of this stuff was really fun returning to this one. Oh yeah yeah um yeah you know, overall but you know really cool one like you said it's definitely one of my favorites too as far as uh well cats episodes i don't know i can't say it. it's one of my favorite overall but definitely yeah one of the cats, cats episode yeah it's pretty good yeah <laughs> all right so shall we finish off with our to... last segment yep is it my turn i can't remember yeah Mm-mm. okay <laughs> curtain of cruelty. when a strange pink curtain is going through nowhere making the citizens cruel and mean courage finds out that all of um that all of this is caused by professor mean who is also cruel and unhappy uh <laughs> yeah so this was funny so this one i really liked for at least highlighting um again eustace and muriel's differences um just to sort of see like how some of them are sort of well eustace being unchanged because he's already cruel <laughs> yeah he's like, they won't affect him at all yet yeah and he's just happy to see everyone else be as horrible as he is <laughs> i know this one actually gave me kind of vibes of that one that had the guy who was shooting the bombs the depressing like kind of cannonballs that would hit the city and make everybody kind of really sad and depressed this yes. one gave me almost kind of that vibes you know with our kind of crazy mean scientists making this weird curtain that goes around and then we kind of see different uh examples throughout the episode of people getting turned into cruel like the bird i think the bird was the first one and he throws the rock through the right. window <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i really like the fact yeah i didn't even think about the tower of um zolost or something yeah yeah, yeah. Zo- yeah zolost because it was a yeah. zoloft joke um <laughs> yeah this idea of just taking um, an emotion and making it a motivation is yeah. really you know just simple but clever um you know, this I, I almost kind of want to show this as I work in a school now. And I'm like, hmm, I'm trying to think of like media to use in terms of like teaching like social emotional stuff. I'm like, maybe this is a good one. Um, you know, especially now that it pairs with the other one so well, like you said. Oh, yeah. That would be two, two great like double feature, like little watches of episodes right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Depression and anger, right? And or like <laughs> meanness, right? It's sort of, uh, right? All that sort of loves company. Right. And I love I love that message. Um, and then they sort of paired it and kind of continued here. Um, oh, we got the return of the Jean Bon. Jean Bon, right? yeah, Jean Bon Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, we got him, you know, wanting to give this, you know, this girl free, you know, free meat to take home and now it's a thousand bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, she was she got real mean too, and she started stomping all, all the meat, and then we get the mayor. I believe the mayor is a, a reprising character who came in again. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, so trivia wise, so apparently the Shadow of Courage, back from that episode, um, there was a girl that was, they reused her. So I wonder if that little girl was also from that episode. I think so. Yeah. The one that was trying to buy the meat. I think she, I think she has to be that one. I think. Yeah. 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 That's the one. Cause I, I'm thinking there's no other girl characters get, that get mentioned in the, in the, in the cast list. So yeah, fun little, little cameo there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what do you think overall, though? I like how we end up finding out was it her fabric softener. Yeah, Muriel coming in clutch with her fabric softener. That mm-hmm. uh, that's why courage isn't affected. We we forgot to talk about that kind of that way. He isn't affected by the curtain is because he drank her fabric softener, right? Or he poured it all over himself or something. <laughs> oh yeah, he was really curly at the beginning. He was really like soft and. Yeah. I know he looked like a really, really soft, like kind of sheep, you know, fluffy. He like a sheep. Yeah, that, that, again, another little courage design I would love to have as a plush. <laughs> I know because then you can like comb his hair. It looks very stylish, like he he did. He looked very fancy. <laughs> he looked proud. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I sort of I love that. So yeah, so he kind of goes in. He just sort of messes with uh, Doctor Mean's machine, and that's you know sort of a very simple resolution to the episode. But um, overall, yeah, no, I definitely loved it. Um, oh, and apparently, so this is, might be a trilogy of episodes. There's going to be an episode called King of Flan, so we're going to keep it out an eye on that one. Oh wow! So the, I'm glad I just scrolled down to the trivia. And it also mentioned the do- the Tower of Doctor Zalost. 
Um, and I also mentioned King of Flan. So maybe the, you know, the people of nowhere will be, a, you know, attacked with another emotion <laughs> that they don't uh-huh. want. <laughs> that would be cool. I know, because this is, I think, only... I think this is only the second or third episode where we've actually seen the the town, like the town of nowhere where they go in. Like I say, you know, yeah, like the actual like city or town or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's awesome. I um, yeah, they really, yeah, we really sort of stick outside. Uh, oh, is this the one? No, we forgot to mention. I think going back to oh, which episode was it now? Um, the Pentagon. On the ch- <laughs> the Pentagon, yeah. <laughs> so when they go when we go to the Pentagon, was it this episode? No, I think it was the the one before the cats one, wasn't it? Was it Cats Under the Sea, where he gets shot of the submarine and he ends up? Yes, he ends up at the Pentagon. Yeah. So we actually see the <laughs> newscaster, right? Yeah, well, I forgot to mention that we can see the newscaster from the opening credits actually reporting in front of in Pentagon. color too, <laughs> and in color, right? I I just thought that was really cool. That was uh, a clever. <laughs> Um, sort of self-referential or I don't know if it was self-aware moment, but it, it gave us a little bit more. Oh yeah, to make him more like of a three-dimensional just character because I think that's I think that's the second time, second or third time that we've seen him like outside, like of newscasting or seen him like actually there mm-hmm. at the news site kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love. <laughs> Sorry, going back an episode, but I just remembered the joke. It was like, um, yeah, no one. There's apparently there's a leak at the Pentagon and no one knows where the leak is. And then the guy comes back. He's like, you want to buy a leak? <laughs> you want to buy some top secret information? <laughs> <laughs> banana. That's silly. Which I think we've seen him before too. That banana maybe in like one other crazy episode. Yeah. Cause it's just the design and like how he had the weird one, like bushy eyebrow and then the, the silly hat. <laughs> Wasn't there like a town of banana people? Or am I thinking of, was there another town of different, that was yeah, that was an episode. Yes, you're sure you're right. You're totally right because I remember yeah, that one in our grouping of episodes. Yeah, because yeah, right. I was kind of like mm. that was a, it was a weird one to group in that grouping because I think we had a lot of horror episodes and then it was like this random, completely comedy episode about <laughs> banana people. Yeah, yeah, I right, I remember that now. <laughs> ah, but overall, this was a fun, it was a fun batch of episodes. Not a lot, yeah, no, not a lot of horror references. Um, but it was it was still a fun. Um, badge again we get cats back you know conway was a cool villain um yeah valkyrie even when they go silly like that like i enjoyed the valkyries more than um like when the goose it was just the goose's episode oh yeah then the goose one yeah the valkyries one was really fun if i had to pick out of this batch that might be my favorite one to return to or my favorite episode out of this batch that was really funny <laughs> oh yeah I think definitely valkyries i like the hard drive one i think that was a good double episode um and then yeah conway oh and then scuba yeah yeah so cats and and the curtain maybe were my like, least two but then yeah but yeah you know overall this was a fun batch let's see i um I'll, i'm gonna actually have to look on the other app because the the courage wiki is all over the place oh yeah with the episodes yeah so that's why our listing of episodes is kind of different because i know max has a different one from wiki so <laughs> mm-hmm. so we have uh, be, uh feast of the bullfrogs um tulips worm okay so in louvre we are too louvre is spelled like the louvre Okay, so maybe a French episode of France, maybe going to France. Oh, Night of the Scarecrow. So we're going to get horror again. Oh, sweet. That's cool. Because that's actually like a direct reference to, I believe, like an actual horror title. I think there's a horror title like that. Oh, okay. Mondo Magic. So at least a mystical episode. And then Watch the Birdies. So this could be a bird's (laughs) reference. Nice. So we will see. We will see. And then before you know it, we're going to be on season four and then the movie. So, oh, yeah, it's going to be really fun. Like I said, very happy to get back into the grind and back to doing these courage episodes with the Steve. It was a lot of fun. And is there anything you want to talk about on voices that's coming up or you want to plug that's happening anytime soon? Yeah. So Angel, um, as we as we re, as we record, she is recording an interview of the founders of Found TV, which is the found footage TV app that just wow. Uh, you know, opened or, you know, launched. That's so cool. So that, yeah. So that interview should be coming up soon. 
Um, keep an eye out for the next episode of um, Coffee Crypt. And Nora and I will have that for you this week. And um, Rob and I will be wrapping up Agatha all along this week as well. So lots, lots of fun stuff to look forward to. Awesome. And like I said, you can check all that good stuff out at Voices from the Mausoleum. I'll have the link down below in the description so you can go follow them and show them all the love and support that they deserve. And thank you for sticking around with us all. Hope you all have an awesome and happy day. Peace out.